How do you design one of the most advanced ERs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room, it's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. Basketball tonight at Bishop Twanger High School as the Bishop Twanger Saints are set to host the Carroll Chargers in our Indiana Physical Therapy Boys High School Basketball Game of the Week. And on the girls' side, it certainly lived up to its filling as the Carroll Chargers just narrowly defeated the Bishop Twanger Saints 58-57 on the girls' side. We got high school basketball here for you tonight on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. And remember, after the final buzzer tonight on the boys' side, stay tuned as Michael McIntyre will be live at the Pine Valley Pizza Hut for our Parkview Sports Medicine post-game show. Again, that's live tonight at Pizza Hut, the Pine Valley location. We'll have the rundown all the scores on uh, both the boys' and girls' sides tonight as 2016 has tipped off at Indiana High School Basketball. And make sure to stay tuned to ESPN 1380 and 100.9 FM tomorrow evening for men's college basketball. The IPFW Mastodons are on the road at Denver. It's a 6 o'clock game. The OP Insurance Services pregame show comes your way at 5 45 the dons are out at denver looking to stay undefeated in summit league play the dons are 13 and 4 on the season best start in their division one history and tomorrow night they are at denver against six o'clock game 5 45 pregame coverage brett rump is out in the mile high city for that one. Here tonight, though, it is the ninth-ranked Carroll Chargers and the Bishop Twanger Saints here at Bishop Twanger High School. And a gym that's at just about capacity. It was a nice showing for the girls game, and now the student sections have made their presence felt in the bleachers here at Bishop Twanger High School as the starters are introduced out onto the floor. And so we'll give you the starters as well. We'll start with the visiting Carroll Chargers who are led by head coach Marty Beasley, who is in his 11th year leading the Chargers with a record of 150 and 92. Overall, as a high school head coach, 17 seasons, a record of 219 and 157. Carroll, which is 8-2 on the season, 2-0 in the SAC in the regular season, 4-1 overall in SAC play. And the Chargers start Arius Jones in the backcourt. He's a 6'3", 170-pound sophomore. Avery Pfaff, another guard at 5'10", 155 pounds. He's a senior. Jacob Redding, the leading scorer this year. The 6'1", 160-pound junior has averaged 15 points per game for Carroll. Kellum Brown is a 6'3", 190-pound senior who has averaged 9.8 points and 5 rebounds. And the second leading scorer and leading rebounder for Carroll, Kyle Mallers, who will be continuing his basketball career next year at Ball State. Mallers, 6'7", 215 pounds. He is a senior. And as they're ready now to introduce the Bishop Twanger Saints here at home under the charge of head coach Matt Kostoff. Kostoff in his 17th year at Bishop Twanger. He has led the Saints to a record of 208 and 157. And starting for him in the backcourt, Campbell Donovan, a six-foot senior. Jack Pittenberg, a five-foot eleven junior. Sam Royal, a six-one senior. And Conlin Martin, a six-foot junior, along with David O. Daniel, who's really the only post presence that Bishop Twanger has down low. They'll oftentimes play three, if not four guards, but they do have one true big in David O. Daniel, who is a six-foot eight senior. Twanger at 4-5 and five on the year, 0-2 in SAC regular season games, 0-3 overall in the SAC, but the Saints have won three in a row. They won three in a row over the holidays with victories over Indianapolis. Heron, 
Leo and Indianapolis Tindley most recently on December 30th they won 47-45 so it's Bishop Twanger's first game of 2016 and it is also Carroll's first game of 2016 Chargers coming off of a loss down against Loring Central at Newcastle Loring Central is ranked number six in 4A and the Chargers lost that one by six it was perhaps even closer than that Chargers wear their road royal blue jerseys that read Carol across the chest in white outlined in black numbers beneath and on the back. They have black and white stripes down the side of their jerseys and pants. Twanger wears its home white jerseys with Twanger across the chest in navy. The numbers in gold with navy trim on the front and the back. Gold and navy stripes down the side. Twanger wins the tip. The Saints at home go from left to right in the first quarter. With D.C. Hendricks back in our ESPN 1380 and 100.9 FM studios. John Nolan here at Bishop Dwinger High School. Thanks so much for making us part of your Friday night. On the opening possession, the seats come up empty as Conlon Martin misses a one-handed, a right-handed hook on the right side. And now Carroll sets up the half-court offense on the left end. The Chargers this year have averaged 59 points per game, more of a half-court predicated offense rather than an up-and-down style of offense. The Chargers, though, fantastic defensively and only allowing 46 points per game. On the left wing in front of the Bishop Dwenger bench, it's Avery Fath. Hands it off into the corner. Now up top, Fath. Passes right wing. A 3 too strong for Kellen Brown. A whistle and a foul called against Dwenger going for the board. First foul for either side. And the Saints foul goes against Sam Royal, six foot one senior. Chargers do have the size advantage on Bishop Twanger. Baseline inbound pass. Left post for Kyle Mallers, who has it stolen away. The Saints on the run, left to right. Behind the back, dribble, Campbell Donovan flips one up with the right hand. And no ball underneath the basket on the right side. And there was a foul called. Foul goes against Kellum Brown. First on Brown, first on Carroll. And it's two free throws on the right side for Campbell Donovan. And the first is good. Bishop Twanger one, Carroll nothing. We played a minute and 12 seconds here in our Indiana Physical Therapy Boys High School Game of the Week. Second free throw, back iron, no for Donovan. And Carroll controls the defensive Carroll. From right to left, Avery Fath at the controls. Dribble handoff for Jacob Redding, the leading scorer who averages 15 points a game. Crossover dribble, dish right corner. Arias Jones swings it, left side, baseline, Kellum Brown drives, scores, and he's fouled. Well, they'll say wave off the basket. Foul called on the floor before the bucket. Second foul against Bishop Twanger, and it's the first that goes against the big man, David O'Daniel. Inbound pass into the middle of the paint for Kyle Mallers. Too easy for the six foot seven senior who's headed to Ball State. Carroll two, Dwanger one. Dwanger ball right side. Scoreboard currently reads 3-0 Dwanger, but that is erroneous. Donovan drives down the middle, throws one off the backboard, too strong. Offensive rebound for the 6'8", O'Daniel. Puts the ball on the deck, kicks it out up top for Ahmad Clark. Clark bounces to the foul line, dishes right corner. Donovan tees up a three, too strong. Another offensive rebound for David O'Daniel in the left corner. Bounce pass left wing for Amon Clark. Clark takes it to the 10, lays it up and in off glass. 3-2 Bishop Twanger back in front. We played two minutes and 20 seconds here at Bishop Twanger High School. Carroll in control left side at the foul line. Avery Fath, the jumper, too strong. Rebound, bounce off the rim twice. Three bodies on the tech and Twanger gathers the loose ball. Conlon Martin sacrificed his body, diving for the loose ball. And now it's Martin who has it in front of the Carroll bench. Triggers a pass between the rings for Sam Royal. Back out of the right wing for Campbell Donovan. And Dwinger goes into its half-court offense. 5.05 to go first quarter. The Saints lead Carroll 3-2. Donovan drives left baseline. Shot fake. A whistle and a foul called on the floor against Carroll. And now our first substitution for either side. It's Carroll that goes to the bench first. Anthony Martin, a six foot three, 160 pound junior, checks in, and he replaces Carroll's leading scorer, Jacob Redding. That foul, by the way, 
That called the foul. It was out of bounds off of Carroll. Twanger on the right side. On the right wing. Almond Clark drives, lose the handle. Front court left. Carroll all alone. And it's Kellen Brown who leaves it up. The finger roll. Good. Carroll leads 4-3. Twanger ball from left to right. The Dwanger students are across the way to the left. There's the stage behind the basket on the left side. Dwanger attacks on the right side. There's a whistle called away from the ball. An offensive foul against David O'Daniel, the post player, trying to set up shop down low. And that is a costly second foul on David O'Daniel. It comes with 425 left in the first quarter. So a Dwanger team that's already undersized now without its best post player for probably the rest of this first quarter. Oh, Daniel goes to the bench. As Carroll has it now on the left side. Saints go to Ryan Burkhoff in off the bench. Carroll feeds left post and it's off the glass and in for Arias Jones. Carroll six, Dwanger three. Halfway through the first quarter. Dwanger on the right side. And off the bench, it's Ryan Berghoff who makes the running right-handed hook. And the Saints students, who are, for the most part, all wearing black, jump up and down. Three on the right wing, too strong for Kyle Mallers. And Dwanger gathers the defensive rebound. Campbell Donovan dribbles behind the back to change speeds. Dribbles to the left wing. Now on the right wing, it's Amon Clark. Clark drives right lane, puts it up off the glass. Weave off the basket. It's a blocking foul that was called before the shot attempt. Carroll foul goes against Arias Jones. His first, and it's the third against the Chargers in this opening quarter. Substitution for Dwanger as Conlin Martin checks out, and he is replaced. On the floor by Austin Burns, a 6'1 senior. 3.15 to go, first quarter. Carroll 6, Dwanger 5, Dwanger ball right side. Jump step into the paint, and Sam Royal flips it up with the left hand and in. Dwanger takes the lead, 7-6 with 3.05 left in the first quarter. A handful of Dwanger students bare-chested with their paints checked with their chest painted in black, spelling Saints. Carroll, possession on the left side. Mallers, open look at a left wing three. Shot fake, takes a dribble to the right, tries a three, no good. Long rebound comes out to Clark for Dwinger. He speeds into the front court. Now it slows down the tempo. Finds Sam Royal, dribbles to the foul line, and he's fouled on the floor. Foul on Kellen Brown. That is the seniors' second, and it's Carroll's fourth foul of this first half with 2.36 to go in the first quarter. High intensity so far, and Dwanger leads Carroll. The Chargers, who are ranked number nine in the state, 7-6. Dwanger at 4-5 and five on the air. They've played a number of close games. They've averaged 53.1 points per game this year, have allowed an average of 53 points per game. 2.20 to go, first quarter. Dwanger ball right side. Royal left baseline, spins, and he's called for a travel. The turnover gives possession to Carroll with 2.14 to go in the first quarter. A Carroll substitution now as the Chargers again go to the bench and call upon the six foot four sophomore Riley Perlick. More height on the floor for Carroll. Top of the key, Jacob Redding dribbling, and an offensive foul is called on Redding. Dribbling with the left hand. He attempted to create separation, pushing off with his right arm, and he's called for an offensive foul. Stoppage with 2.06 left in the first quarter. Bishop Twanger, 7. Carroll, 6. With that offensive foul on Redding. It's now four fouls against Carroll so far in this first half. Dwanger looks to take advantage and add to a one-point lead. 
Zach McKenna in off the bench. Bounce pass. Right baseline for Sam Royal. Up top. Campbell Donovan a three. Too strong. Carroll the rebound. Chargers look to push from right to left. Front court left. Kyle Mallers. At 6'7", he has good handles, two dribbles between the legs. Lobs a pass, right wing, Anthony Martin, shot fake, penetration, cycles it back out. 125 to go, first quarter. No shot clock, and a lengthy possession here for Carroll. Mallers, 30 feet away, dribbles with the left hand to the foul line. Defense converges on him, he kicks it out, left wing, and the three is good for Jacob Redding. 9-7, Carroll back in front. 105 to go, first quarter at Bishop Dwenger High School. Brian Berghoff puts the ball on the floor, passes, gets it back, left corner, his three, off the iron, no. Carroll, the defensive Carroll. Jones dribbles down court with his head up, kicks left corner, and Anthony Martin is fouled on the floor. 45.5 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Carroll, nine. Matching its ranking in the state. Dwanger, seven. The Dwanger foul called on Austin Burns. First on the sophomore, fourth on the Saints. Both sides with four fouls committed in this opening quarter. Baseline inbound for Carroll. It goes into the left corner for Jacob Redding. Shot fake, the dribble, and he makes the mid-range jumper. 11-7 Carroll. That's five consecutive points for Jacob Redding, who averages 15 a game. Jordan Bridges in off the bench for Carroll, and he plays man-to-man defense at the point against Jack Pettenberger. Pettenberger passes left baseline along two. No good for Ryan Berghoff, and the rebound down to Carroll. Chargers doing a good job on the defensive glass, especially since David O'Daniel, Dwanger's center, came out of the game halfway through this quarter with his second foul. Six seconds left in the quarter. Entry pass, right post, and Anthony Martin sticks it in off the glass. Two seconds to go in the first quarter. Desperation half court three. No good for Austin Burns. And that concludes the opening eight minutes at Bishop Twanger High School. Our score, Carroll 13, Bishop Twanger 7. You're listening to the Indiana Physical Therapy Boys High School Basketball Game of the Week on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. Welcome to Staples. Staples guy, ink is so pricey, I've had to give up other things I need for my office. Well, right now, you'll get 15% back in Staples rewards on all HP ink and toner, so you'll... I can use the rewards for other office essentials. Bingo. Like a desk. That could be useful. Shop Staples for all the ink you need at a great value every day. Staples, make more happen. Minimum purchase $60 on HP ink or $200 on HP toner. Offer ends one nine sixteen For details, see store or visit staples.com slash rewards. Step right up to the amazing taste of Coney Island Hard Root Beer. A delicious adult twist on an old favorite. The real root beer taste with a hint of vanilla will thrill your taste buds. Coney Island Hard Root Beer. Ask for it by name. Coney Island Brewing Company, Brooklyn, New York. Drink responsibly. You're listening to High School Basketball, presented by Indiana Physical Therapy on ESPN 1380 at 100.9 FM. Ask for it by name. Coney Island Brewing Company, Brooklyn, New York. Drink responsibly. You're listening to High School Basketball, presented by Indiana Physical Therapy on ESPN 1380 at 100.9 FM. D.C. Hendricks in our ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM studios. John Nolan at Bishop Twanger High School, where the Bishop Twanger student section jumps up and down wearing black chanting, I believe that we will win. Across to our left, while over to our right, Neon Nation, Carroll's student section answers back with scoreboard. The scoreboard reads Carroll 13, Bishop Twanger 7. It's the start of the second quarter. Carroll with the ball wearing its road royal blue. Chargers go from right to left, and Jordan Bridges, the backup wing, attacks left lane, and he's fouled going up. Fifth foul of the half against Bishop Dwanger, and it spells two free throws for Jordan Bridges. That Dwanger foul goes against Evan Doling, the six foot three senior off the bench. First of two free throws, good for Jordan Bridges, who averages about four points per game. 14-7. It's now an 8-0 run 
for Carroll. The second around and out. And the defensive rebound hauled in by Dwanger. Saints in white from left to right. 30 seconds gone by in the second quarter. Dwanger cycles it around the arc. They play with five on the perimeter. Occasionally, someone cutting inside the paint. But David O'Daniel, the 6'8 senior, remains on the bench with two fouls. Twanger head coach Matt Costov up off the bench, barking out orders. As the Saints show patience. Patience. Now left wing three. Up and in. Sam Royal. He's got five. 14-10. The Saints cut their deficit down to four. Carroll from right to left. Bridges holds 25 feet away left wing. Chest pass between the rings. Riley Perlick discharges left wing. Avery Fath. Fath bounces with the right hand. A whistle called away from the ball. And it's another Dwanger foul. That's the seventh foul of this half against the Saints. That one goes against Amon Clark. Check that it's the sixth foul of the half. The next one will equal the bonus for Carroll. Baseline inbound floated up top for Kyle Mallers, the six foot seven senior. Hands it off to the guard, Avery Fath, who stands at 5'10. Bounce pass left baseline, Jordan Bridges. And now he swings it outside for Fath. He dribbles around a screen right. Hands it off, right elbow for Mallers. Mallers, fadeaway jumper, pure. 16 10, Carroll leads Dwanger. Saints have the ball. Left to right, they go in white. 6 10 to play, first half. Right wing jumper off the mark for Evan Doling. And another defensive rebound for Carroll. Mallers changes, speeds it midcourt. Leaner, left side, it drops. Off the glass and in. Kyle Mallers, who is double teamed, nevertheless scores. That's four in a row for the Ball State bound senior. And Carroll leads by eight. 18 10 with 5.50 to go in the first half. And the Saints want to talk it over. Timeout called by Dwanger head coach Matt Costiff, whose team has won three in a row after they had a rough start to the season. Well, it began on a high note. They won at Norwell, 53-50. But then, five consecutive losses. They lost at home to Homestead and to Kalb. Lost on the road at Concordia. Lost at home to Southside by two. And lost to Bedford North Lawrence by a single point. And by the way, they had a four-point loss against DeKalb. So a lot of close losses finally flipped the script with three straight wins coming into tonight. Meanwhile, Carroll at 8-2 and two got off to such a tremendous start beginning the year 7-0 and oh, and finally suffered its first loss in the Parkview Sports Medicine SAC Holiday Tournament Championship game against Northside in overtime. Bounce back with a win at Newcastle and a tournament over Martinsville. And then the same day, playing two games in one day. A week ago Wednesday, lost to Lawrence Central, a fellow top 10 team in Class 4A, 62-56. After the timeout, Dwanger ball down eight from left to right. Sam Royal dribbles with the left hand, 35 feet away, while motioning out a play call with the right hand. Now he tries a right wing three, no, and the rebound brought down by Kyle Mallers. These possessions for Dwanger are one shot and done as the Chargers have owned their defensive glass. Top of the key, Mallers shot fake, bounce pass, right post. Jordan Bridges fades away, misses off the glass. Dwanger the rebound. Royal tried to throw it off of a Carroll player underneath the basket. It backfires as the loose ball ends up in the hands of Jacob Redding, who scoops one in. 20 to 10, Carroll leads Dwanger. Remember, at one point, it was 7 to 6, Dwanger. So it's a 14 3 Chargers run. Royal, left wing, jabs right, passes left, receives it back. Shot fake, straight on by Jack by Zach Smithy. Passes on the right wing, and Amon Clark misses along two. Carroll, another rebound. Avery Fath drives left lane, flips one up. It doesn't fall, but he's fouled. Foul number seven of the half against Bishop Dwenger. It's a two-shot foul for Avery Fath. 
437 left, second quarter. First is too strong for Fath. That foul, by the way, went against Bishop Dwanger's Evan Doling, the six foot three senior, with two fouls off the bench. And now he goes back there, and he's replaced by Ryan Bergoff. Second free throw drops for Fath, and now he's subbed out of the game, replaced by Anthony Martin. 5'10", senior out, 6'3", junior in. 4.35 left, first half. Carroll, 21, Bishop Dwanger, 10. Dwanger with it on the right end. After a kickball, Dwanger with an inbound. Well, the clock continued to run there. Not helping out the home side, but what will is a three in the corner on the left side for Zach Smithy. His first three points. It's the second made three of the quarter for Dwanger, and they're back within single digits at 21-3 until a response from Arius Jones, who wiggles his way out of the paint and banks one in. 23-13 Carroll. Dwanger now from left to right. Campbell, Donovan, dribbles into the paint. A leaner, count it, plus one. Twenty-three, fifteen, with 3.40 left in the second quarter. And the Carroll foul goes against Anthony Martin, his first. Chance for the conventional three-point play for Campbell Donovan and a six-foot junior swishes the free throw. 23-16. Carroll leads and maintains possession. Right wing, wide open. Jacob Redding a three. Too strong. Long rebound goes all the way into the backcourt. Three Saints are there, and the Saints win it. Donovan misses a left shot, a left side layup, and the rebound comes down to Carroll. 3.15 to go in the first half. The Chargers with it, leading the Saints 23-16. Martin tries the top of the key three. Too strong. Offensive rebound. Jared Hofer and the six foot nine sophomore sticks it in off the glass with the right hand. 25-16, Carroll. Hofer doesn't even average a point a game. Just got two there. And now an offensive foul called against Dwanger. Eighth foul of the half against the Saints, although the offensive foul won't result in free throws or a one-to-one -one bonus for Carroll. There was a push-off called against Sam Royal, his second foul. 2.45 to go in the first half. Carroll 25, Bishop Dwanger 16. Chargers with it on the left side, attacking the basket with the stage behind it. Navy Curtain closed. The show on the hardwood here at Bishop Twanger tonight. Hofer, this big man, lost the handle at the top of the key. Wins it back at midcourt. Now a lob pass down low for Kyle Mallers is intercepted. Saints march from left to right. Right corner. Royal fakes the three. Gives up top. Smitey for three. It's off to the right. Long rebound for Kyle Mallers. Now the Chargers push. Redding changes speeds at the foul line. And he draws a foul. Ninth foul of the half against Bishop Twanger. It's one and one. Foul line left for Jacob Redding with 2.02 to play in the first half. And now at the stoppage, Zach Smithy comes out of the game and he's replaced by David O'Daniel, the six foot eight senior center. O'Daniel has been on the bench since about midway through the first quarter. His departure in part enables the Carroll run. What was once a 7-6 Dwanger lead in the early going, now is a 26-16 game after the first free throw is good for Jacob Redding to earn another. 6-1, 160-pound junior. One of the top guards in Fort Wayne this year, and he makes them both. 27-16, Carroll leads Dwanger. Final two minutes of the first half at Bishop Dwanger High School. Four and five seats against the eight and two Carroll Chargers. 
Ryan Burkhall drives down the right lane and he strips. The turnover, and now the Chargers are on the go from right to left. Martin, right post, passes out on the right wing for Arius Jones. Crossover dribble, pass, right baseline. Martin, mid-range jumper, in and out. Offensive rebound for Jordan Bridges, and he travels. Carroll head coach Marty Beasley shakes his head at that one. He liked the effort from Jordan Bridges, the wiry 6'2 junior, who soared up for the offensive rebounds. But he's called for the travel, and so Dwanger has it with 90 seconds left in the first half. Bergdahl again loses the handle, and Carroll steals it away. Chargers from right to left in royal blue. Jones, foul line, pulls up, misses. It was halfway down, but came out, and Sam Royal has the Dwanger rebound. He dribbles down court with his head up, bouncing with the right hand. With his left hand, he calls for a screen to be set by David O'Daniel. Gets the screen, passes left, corner three, no good for Conlin Martin, and Carroll has the rebound. A bounce pass is intercepted at midcourt by Campbell Donovan. One-on-one -on -one against Arius Jones, he draws a foul. 52.7 seconds left in the first half, and Campbell Donovan is going to the line for two. I like the creative thought from Arius Jones, who is trying to thread the needle with uh, half the length of the court bounce pass. But good defense from Campbell Donovan to steal it. And now he makes the first of two free throws. 27-17. On the road, Carroll has the lead at Dwenger. One more free throw still to come for Campbell Donovan. Donovan on the air. Second leading scorer for the Saints, averaging about 13 points per game. He made a pair. 50 seconds to go in the first half. Carroll has a nine-point lead and the basketball. Jordan Bridges, right wing in front of the Bishop Dwanger student section. Those students are silent at the moment with 30 seconds left in the first half. Carroll in its half-court offense with no shot clock. Potentially the Saints could, or excuse me, the Chargers could hold for the final shot of this half. Carroll content in the half court with now 15 seconds left in the first half. Avery Pfaff, point guard, has it midcourt. Standing near the BD logo. Passes, left wing. Kyle Mallers is fouled in the act of shooting, attempting a long two with 7.8 seconds left in the second quarter. That's the 10th foul of the half against Bishop Dwanger. It's the first that's called against Conlin Martin, the six foot junior. And while Carroll is now in the double bonus, it's two shots anyway for Kyle Mallers, who is shooting. He makes the first, 28-18. The second for the 6-7 senior, around it out. Dwanger the rebound. Five seconds left in the first half. Front court right. Campbell Donovan in the left corner. Gives left wing. Conlin Martin a three at the buzzer. No. And that ends the first 16 minutes at Bishop Dwanger High School. The Carroll Chargers 28, the Bishop Dwanger Saints 18 at the half. Coming up here at the half, we'll take a look at some of the first half numbers. And we'll look ahead to the second half. We'll also look back to our first game of the night here on this doubleheader of boys and girls Indiana Physical Therapy High School Basketball Games of the Week on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. From basketball and band to homework and homecoming, does your family calendar get a little too crowded sometimes? I'm Glenn Augustine with the Indiana Youth Institute. Many families are busy these days, but experts say that's not necessarily a negative. Researchers say kids can benefit from a full schedule by gaining new learning opportunities, developing life skills, and getting a chance to succeed outside of academics. But they caution not to let too many activities crowd out family time or add stress to your child's life. Experts have these tips on managing your family schedule. Take an inventory of how your family spends its time and see if you need to make adjustments. Schedule in family time and free time. Finally, learn to say no. You don't have to do everything that's asked of you. This Kids Count Minute is a message from the Indiana Youth Institute. For more parent tips, go to IYI.org forward slash kids. Kids count on you.
do you know a lot about beer? Well, it's time for Sam Adams' Know Your Beer. Not all hops taste the same. American hops. They're piney, citrusy, like a lumberjack chopping grapefruit. German hops. They're floral and spicy, a beautiful bouquet with thorns. Ow. English hops. Earthy and delicate, a beer lover's cup of tea. Whatever hops you like, from Rebel IPA to Boston Lager, Sam Adams is crafting a brew for you. Boston Beer Company, Boston Mass, safe responsibly. Now at the Home Depot, you can get 10% off appliances, $396 or more. So let's do better features for fewer bucks. With savings on brands like LG, KitchenAid, and Samsung, you can cook smarter, rinse cleaner, spin faster, and chill sooner. Let's do this with 10% off appliances, $396 or more. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Valid through January 27th, 2016. U.S. only. See store for details. You're listening to High School Basketball, presented by Indiana Physical Therapy on ESPN 1380 and 100.9 FM. We're at the half at Bishop Twinger High School, where the Carroll Chargers on the road have a 28-18 lead over the Bishop Twinger Saints in our Indiana Physical Therapy High School Basketball Boys Game of the Week, about 12 or so minutes ago until the start of the second half. And pleasure to be joined now by Jessica Starbird from Wayne Channel 15. Jess, Happy New Year to you. Happy covering New Year. the boys and girls tonight at Bishop Twinger High School in the doubleheader against Carroll. What do we have to look forward to tonight on the Highlight Zone? We got 17 games on the Highlight Zone. This is the first time that Carroll or Twinger has been our game of the week. So exciting to be here at the newly refurbished Bishop Twinger High School gym and honor both of those teams. We got a fun Highlight Zone intro with both the Neon Nation and the Sanctuary. So you got that before the game. Plus, highlights of minute 20 of highlights from just this game plus sound with the winner afterwards and then we had the girls game earlier quite a barn burner here as ross and i were calling it just in the first quarter and it finished to be a really great one with kelly danum damon getting that two point j on the baseline to win it for carol so we got that we got the game of the week and a lot of other fun stuff too it was a one point win for the carol girls over Bishop Twanger in our first game of the night, in the game that went down to the final seconds. And now again at the half here, the Carroll boys lead Bishop Twanger 28-18. So, Jess, I hope you had a nice little holiday break, a chance to wind down a little bit, at least on the high school side of things. I know you still kept busy locally with Comets, Mad Ants, and oh, yeah. a lot of other action. But now what are you looking forward to in 2016 here on the local scene? Ooh, you know what? I think Homestead Girls comes to mind just right off the bat. They've been absolutely brilliant to watch. They had that thriller against Lawrence North last Saturday, and now this Saturday, another ranked opponent comes to town with Karma. We'll be at that game. So I would definitely say following the Homestead Girls run, because I think they're going to head all the way back down to Banker's Life. Then if you look ahead a little bit further in 2016, you're always welcome to talk about Tin Cap. Oh, <laughs> wait, about that? team. Well, there will be plenty of time to talk <laughs> baseball once we get there, but like you said, the Homestead girls ranked number one, not just in the SAC right now, but in all of Indiana. Last year, made it down to Baker's Life Fieldhouse, finished as runners-up in Class 4A, and a great shot now to, to win the title yes. in Indy this year. That was actually my second weekend was covering the state tournament or the state championship game for the girls last year. We had Canterbury, Tippy Valley, and Homestead. So it was quite a day and unfortunately we went 0 for 3. So I'm hoping the next time we go down there we'll uh, get to see the Homestead girls win it. But you did right upon your uh, arrival in Fort Wayne last year with Wayne, uh, New Channel 15. You did get a chance to cover uh, Indiana Mr. Basketball and Caleb Slonigan. Oh, well. yes. At Purdue. That was pretty cool. So it's been about a year now. A good year for you yeah. in the Summit City. A crazy year. You know what? Starting in late February is probably the most exciting time to really get going in sports here in Indiana because you have the boys tournament just getting started, the girls tournament coming to an end. You got Comets just about to get into the postseason. Same with the Maddians. And then, of course, the Tin Caps getting ready to start. And, hey, before we uh, talk any more basketball, I know you're from the New England area, big Patriots fan, so looking ahead here to the NFL uh, playoffs, Patriots have the bye this weekend, but what are your expectations? Ooh. I want to avoid Pittsburgh for as long as humanly possible, so I was okay with getting the two seed. I will be honest. 
I feel I feel most comfortable with the Texans, but as Ryan Schwab and I were talking before the game, we'd like another crack at the Chiefs after last year's Monday night debacle. But that led to the spark that turned around the Super Bowl winning season. You're lucky that my Jets didn't make it in. Oh, so lucky. So lucky. They can't even do it. Oh, uh, typical Jets fashion going <laughs> down the stretch. Well, Jess, thanks so much for stopping by. Remind us where we can find the highlight zone and all your coverage. Oh, absolutely. You can find us on. We hit it about 11.10 on News Channel 15+. Plus. If you can't make it to watch the game, we post the entire show on Wayne.com. We have our Fill It Up All-Stars 2 sponsored by Phil's One Stop at Marathon. All of that you can find on Wayne.com after the highlight zone. And I don't want to get your Twitter handle wrong. It's Jess At Starboard. Jessica Starbird. Jessica Starbird. At Jessica Starbird. Follow me. Easy enough. <laughs> You're her follower. Well, Jess, thanks so much for stopping by. Enjoy Absolutely. The second half and good luck with the show tonight. Thank you very much. You as well. There's Jessica Starbird from News Channel 15. We're at the half at Bishop Dwanger High School, where the Carroll Chargers lead the Saints 28 18 at the half. We'll take a timeout now, and when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the first half numbers as Carroll, number nine in the state, leads Bishop Twanger 28 18 to their Indiana Physical Therapy Boys High School Basketball Game of the Week on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. Now at the Home Depot, you can get 10% off appliances $396 or more. So let's do better features for fewer bucks. With savings on brands like LG, KitchenAid, and Samsung, you can cook smarter, rinse cleaner, spin faster, and chill sooner. Let's do this with 10% off appliances $396 or more. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Valid through January 27, 2016. U.S. only. See store for details. What if you could save a life by stopping a suicide? I'm Glenn Augustine with the Indiana Youth Institute. Young people today face an enormous amount of pressure. Sadly, they may decide to take their own life as a way to stop the pain. But alert adults can help. First, watch for warning signs such as depression, changes in friends, attitudes, or grades. Also keep an eye out for signs of hopelessness, recklessness, and a feeling of being trapped. If you notice changes, tell the person you're worried about them and be specific about what concerns you and stay in contact with a medical professional for help. Whether you're worried about someone else or yourself, you can call 1-800-273-TALK, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That's 1-800-273-8255. This Kids Count Minute is a message from the Indiana Youth Institute. For more parent tips, go to iyi.org forward slash kids. Kids Count on you. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Way early this morning, Brad Higdon shared a major spoiler alert from everyone's favorite hit show, Sad Emojis, to express his feelings about the plot twist and a playlist he made to drown out his sorrows? Dude, oversharing alert. Brad, Geico has something worth sharing with those who haven't defriended you. Like how you could save hundreds on your car insurance at Geico.com. So stop moping about... You're listening to High School Basketball, presented by Indiana Physical Therapy on ESPN 1380 at 100.9 FM. The Capital DC Hendricks is our studio producer tonight in our ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM studios. John Nolan live at Bishop Dwanger High School. It's halftime between the Bishop Dwanger Saints and the Carroll Chargers. And at the half, on the road, Carroll leads 28-18 in the second half of our doubleheader tonight. In the first half, on the girls' side, Carroll won a close one, a terrific game by a final score of 58-57. We hope that Bishop Twinger on the boys' side here will make a comeback in the second half. So we have another finish that goes down to the final buzzer. And, hey, don't forget, after the final buzzer tonight, we'll have a recap, not only this game, but all the games around the area on our Parkview Sports Medicine post-game show live from the Pine Valley Pizza Hut, hosted tonight by Michael McIntyre. So we hope you tune in and join us. Or, hey, if you want some late dinner tonight or late-night snack, head on down to the Pine Valley Pizza Hut and join Mac. We'll be talking to coaches from around northeast Indiana. Still got about four minutes to go until the start of the second half here. So let's take this time. To recap the numbers from the first half, a half that saw Carroll take a 28-18 lead after the score at the end of the first quarter was 13-7. to 
Carroll shot 11 of 21 from the field in the first half. Bishop Dwanger really struggled, shooting 6 of 20. Big part of that is that the Saints, at a size disadvantage, had to settle for a lot of jump shots and a lot of possessions. That was just one shot and done. Inside the arc, Carroll was 10 for 14. How about that for high efficiency? Inside the arc, Dwanger was 4 for 10. From long range, Carroll... Struggled to shoot from deep, one for seven. Bishop Dwanger, two for ten from downtown. At the free throw line, Carroll was five for eight. Bishop Dwanger, four for five. Carroll had four assists on its 11 made field goals. Dwanger with two assists on its six made field goals. Here's one that you circle on the box score. Carroll out-rebounded Bishop Dwanger 17 to nine. Five of those were offensive rebounds. For Carroll, Bishop Dwanger had a couple of offensive rebounds, but Carroll, for the most part, owned the defensive glass after Bishop Dwanger's long misses on twos. Only one block in the first half. Carroll came up with the block. Bishop Dwanger had three takeaways. Carroll, a couple. Both sides turned it over five times. Individually, as take a look at Carroll, Jacob Redding, the team's leading scorer who averages 15 points per game. He poured in nine in the first half, also grabbed a rebound. Avery Faft contributed three points. Arius Jones had four points as well as four rebounds and an assist. Kyle Mallers, oh, um, five points and six rebounds plus an assist. Anthony Martin, a couple of points, a couple of rebounds plus an assist. Jordan Bridges, one point, two rebounds. Jared Hofer, a couple of points off the bench, plus the rebound. Kellum Brown had two points, a rebound, and an assist. Individually for Bishop Twanger, Sam Royal, five points, two rebounds. Ryan Berghoff had two points and a couple boards off the bench. Campbell Donovan, the high man for the Saints, with six points in addition to a rebound. Conlon Martin had one rebound as well as an assist. Amon Clark, a couple of points, a rebound, and a dime. Zach Smithy, or excuse me, Smithy, three points off the bench. Austin Burns played but did not score. No one else scored for Bishop Dwanger, including David O'Daniel, the Saints' only real post presence down low, a six foot eight senior who picked up his second foul about midway through the first quarter and sat on the bench with those two fouls until the final two minutes of the first half and it was during that stretch that Carroll took the lead and went in front. Our thanks to the Carroll staff for providing those first half stats. We're at the half at Bishop Dwanger High School, this newly refurbished gym which is just outstanding and the Bishop Dwanger students really add to the atmosphere here. They do the old roller coaster routine and the bleachers across the way to the left. That's where you have one or a handful of students get in front. Everyone else puts their hands up while sitting down as if you're in a roller coaster at an amusement park. And then those student leaders signal in different directions over time, increasing the change of direction with more frequency, simulating a roller coaster ride. Well, the first half mostly down for Dwanger, trailing 28-18. They hope to have an ascent Hike up a roller coaster in the second half. Twanger takes the floor in its home white jerseys with Twanger across the chest in navy. Numbers in gold. Navy and gold down the side of the white shorts. Carroll wears its road bl road royal blue jerseys with Carroll across the chest in white. Black trim. Black and white horizontal stripes down both the sides of the jerseys as well as the shorts. They're bolt Chargers logo on the bottom side of those shorts. Dwinger the ball to start the second half. The Saints go from right to left. Saints work it into the corner to Conlon. Martin who drives baseline, goes up, has the ball stripped away. Saints head coach Matt Kostoff wanted a foul called. He didn't get one. And now the Chargers have possession for the first time in this third quarter, already leading by 10. 25 feet away, Arius Jones picks up the dribble. Jones has it right wing now. Twinger plays man-to-man. -man. 
I left arc. Kyle Mallers guarded by David O'Daniel. They're similar in size. Mallers a bit of an advantage in terms of athleticism. Bounce pass for the right post is deflected out of bounds, and it stays with Carroll. 50 seconds gone by in this third quarter. Carroll 28, Bishop Dwanger 18. Baseline inbound. Avery Fath, the inbounder. He floats it towards midcourt where the B and D interlock inside a Navy circle. At the foul line, Kyle Mallers picks up the dribble, fades away, and nails the jumper. 30 to 18. Carroll extends its lead to a dozen. Saints half court on the left side. Ahmad Clark left wing in front of his bench. Fires a pass between the rings for Campbell Donovan. Man-to-man -man defense from Carroll. Right baseline, David O'Daniel faces up against Kyle Mallers. Passes outside the arc right for Ahmad Clark. And a foul is called away from the ball. First foul of the second half on either side. And it goes against Jacob Redding of Carroll. His first. Baseline inbound. Triggered up top. For Campbell Donovan. Dishes left wing for Clark. Clark chest passed right wing for Conlin Martin in front of the student section. He drives right as the ball knocked out of his hands underneath the basket. It's caught by a cheerleader who hands it off to an official and possession stays with Dwayne. The cheerleaders on the baseline left in front of the stage. 6.20 to go, third quarter. Carroll 30, Bishop Dwanger 18. Clark drives right. He stripped, but a foul called. Second foul against Carroll on this defensive possession. And that one's called in the act of shooting. The students extend their arms up in the air, wiggle their fingers, and Clark is short on the first free throw. No whoosh sound effect. Dwanger could use these freebies, trailing 30 to 18. The second for the 5'8 junior. Swish, and there, a whoosh. 30 to 19. Carroll now with the ball, leading on the road. Avery Faft. Has the keys for Carroll on this possession. Dribble handoff left wing for Anthony Martin. The wing off the bench. Jacob Redding, right wing, guarded tightly by Amon Clark. Twanger bands up. Now Kyle Mallers bouncing in front of his bench. Passes it out towards midcourt to Avery Fapp. The Chargers cycle it around the arc. Between the rings, Kyle Mallers fakes right, goes to the left elbow, spins out, finds Fapp. On the right wing, he dribbles to the foul line. The leaner, no defensive rebound for David O'Daniel. Twanger from right to left. The Saints trail 30 to 19. Right corner, Campbell Donovan. Whips it out top for Clark. He snaps a pass onto the left wing for Conlin Martin. Kicks left corner. Down to the elbow, Sam Royal misses the leaner, fading to his right. And the defensive rebound for Carroll. Kyle Mallers dribbles between the legs, penetrates left lane, and a blocking foul is called against David O'Daniel. That's the big man's third, and it's the first against Dwinger in the second half. O'Daniel with three fouls remains on the floor. The inbound pass is tipped by Sam Royal, and he fetches a steal. Royal shows his hops. Now Clark from right to left races across the midcourt strike. Puts up a runner with the right hand. No. Offensive rebound O'Daniel. Bounce pass into the left corner for Clark. He's double teamed. The ball is tipped away. It lands on the lap of a Dwanger assistant. And it'll stay with the Saints. And now David O'Daniel does check out of the game and he's replaced by Ryan Berghoff. Berghoff, pretty good size. He's 6'4". But 6'8 O'Daniel to the bench with three fouls. 4.50 remaining in the third quarter. Carroll 30, Dwanger 19. The Chargers 8-2 on the season in their first year in the SAC. The Saints 4-5.
winless so far in the SAC this year. Anthony Martin drives left for Carroll, and he draws a foul. Second foul of the second half against Dwenger, and it's the first foul, and it goes against Ryan Berghoff. Two free throws, foul line right for Anthony Martin. Wearing blue socks with blue sneakers, he makes the first. An all blue ensemble for the six foot three, 160 pound Lanky Jr. Second free throw. Good as well. Carroll 32, Twinger 19. Largest deficit tonight for the Saints. And with that, head coach Matt Kostoff calls a timeout with 4.34 to play in the third quarter. Well, not a lot to cheer for right now if you're a Twanger fan here. But the good news is, is it's time for the t-shirt toss. The Saints cheerleaders out onto the floor, flinging white t-shirts into the stands. Good number of fans standing, although got to give credit to these high school fans here who do not go as crazy for the opportunity or the potential to obtain a free souvenir like fans so often do at college and professional sporting events where you can't get a fan to stand up for a nice play on the field or court or ice a lot of times, but if there's something free involved, they can't wait for it. Perhaps it has something to do with the cost of admission. Looking to get the best return on investment possible. Fans who are here for the girls game tonight absolutely got their return on investment and then some. Carroll beat Dwenger by a point on a shot made by Kelly Damon of Carroll with 9.6 seconds left. With 4.15 to go in this third quarter in the boys game, Carroll leads Dwenger 32-19. Kellum Brown comes up with a steal for the Chargers and he's fouled in the front court on the right going up for a layup. Good hustle by Ahmad Clark though to make sure that it wouldn't be easy for him. Foul stops the clock with 4.08 left in the third quarter. That was the second foul against the 5'8 Clark. And it sends the 6'3", 190-pound senior Kellum Brown to the line for a pair. His first is good. Brown wears black tights underneath his blue shorts. He wears white socks that go up to about the mid-calf. Brown smoothly sinks both. It's 34-19, Carroll. Halfway through the third quarter. Back to her cut. Campbell Donovan, his layup on the right so side, though, is swatted by Kyle Mallers. Emphatically, Kyle Mallers at 6-7. Spry as well. And left post, Anthony Martin puts one in off the glass. 36-19, Carroll. 3.40 left in the third quarter. Right post, Sam Royal back to the basket, turns around and knocks one down with the right hand. 36-21, a needed response for Dwinger. They're going to need more, though. Three and a half left in the third quarter. Anthony Martin in front of his own bench, shot fake. Triggers between the rings for Kellum Brown. Dribbles right, now swings it left for Kyle Mallers, who's straight on. Pass right wing, Brown tees up with three and buries it. 39-21, Carroll as the Chargers on the bench extend their hands up into the air, emulating the signal of an official and another Dwanger timeout to try to stop the tide with 3.05 left in the third quarter. Largest lead yet for Carroll, 39-21. Well, the Saints aren't alone this year in having a tough time slowing down the Chargers. Carroll began the year with a 21-point win at South Bend Adams and had a dominant 81-43 win over Concord. They beat Concordia 59-43 in their SAC opener. One at Columbia City 49-31. Took care of Wayne 58-31 in the opening round of the SAC Holiday Tournament presented by Parkview Sports Medicine. Carroll Wallop Southside 72-57, then thumped Homestead 62-43, 
before suffering its first loss of the season to Northside in that SAC championship game, 58-54, that in overtime. Bounce back with a win over Martinsville down in that tournament in Newcastle, 58-50, and then lost to Lawrence Central, 62-56. Lawrence Central in the latest state AP poll, ranked number six. Carroll ranked number nine. Top ranked team in the Fort Wayne area. North side, just outside of the top 10, receiving votes. Could figure that they're number 12 in class 4A. After the timeout, a well-drawn up play, and Conlon Martin drives down the center of the Navy paint, and he makes the finger roll layup. 39-23, Bishop Dwenger at home, trailing by 16. Now the Saints extend their pressure all the way up to midcourt. Right baseline, Kyle Mallers back to the basket, bounces with the left hand, gets to the 10, flips it up with the left hand, and he's fouled. Ryan Berghoff appeared to have ball. Apparently he got some body, too. And it's a two-shot foul now for Kyle Mallers. Two twenty-three to play, third quarter. First of two for Mallers. Rattles in. Seventeen point Carroll lead on the road at Bishop Twinger. A six-seven Ball State bound senior sinks the second. Two eighteen to play, forty-one twenty-three Carroll all over Twinger. Middle of the paint. Sam Royal, right-handed hook. No, there was contact, but no foul. Dwanger head coach, Matt Kostiff, incredulous. 2.05 to play in the third quarter. Carroll in the half court on the right side. Left wing, off the bench, Jordan Bridges has trouble bouncing, but no one came out to pressure him. Now kicks right corner, a three off the mark. And the rebound fought for, and a foul is called against Dwanger with 144 left in the third quarter. The Dwanger foul goes against the guard, Conlon Martin, his second, a fifth against the Saints in the second half. Off the inbound, right corner, Jacob Redding misses the three. And another foul called in the battle for the board. This time it's against Carroll. And it's an over the back on Kellen Brown. Third on Brown. Three fouls this half against the visiting Chargers. Jack Pettenberg handles for Bishop Dwinger. Goes between the legs. Dishes for Conlon Martin, and he's fouled on the floor. All of a sudden... A game becoming more physical. It's had a high level of intensity since the start with the bleachers on both sides just about packed. A large student section for the home Saints and a good number of Carroll students, Neon Nation, making the trip as well, wearing their signature Neon Yellow. Right corner, three short for Sam Royal. Offensive rebound for the Saints. Left wing, Campbell Donovan. Gives left corner. A three is pure for Zach Smithy. The southpaw has made two threes off the bench. And Dwangers within 15 at 41 26. We've got 105 left in the third quarter. Jordan Bridges, 30 feet away, picks up the dribble, bounces to Jacob Redding at the midcourt circle. Redding dribbles left, hands off for Bridges' left elbow. He gets into the paint, scoops one up, no, but he's fouled. Winger foul goes against Conlon Martin now his third. It stops the clock at 52.4 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's two free throws for Jordan Bridges, who's one for two at the line so far tonight. Bridges, a lefty, is short on the first attempt. Bridges has long black hair that's tied together in a bun. Braided hair, and the second is good for him. 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Carroll 42, Bishop Twanger 26. 
Left corner, Sam Royal puts it on the deck, dribbles to the foul line, dishes right post. And a foul is drawn underneath by Jack Pettenberg. Pettenberg at 5'11", found himself down low. Did a good job of keeping his composure and drawing his foul. He has two free throws on the left side. Carroll foul goes against Jared Hofer. He's the 6'9 sophomore and off the bench. First of two free throws for the right-handed Jack Pettenberg. And it's good. Shooting with the backdrop of the stage behind the basket on the left. There's an encased large crucifix to the right side of the stage overlooking the Mischief Twanger student section. Second free throw, good as well. 42-28. Ed Twanger chips the deficit down to 14. It was a 10-point game at the half. Full court pressure from the Saints. Without the ball touching the floor, Carroll beats the full court pressure, and it winds up in the hands of Riley Perlick, who makes a layup in the left post. Textbook press breaking. Now left wing three is good for Sam Royal. For as great as the offensive execution was for Carroll there, they didn't get back to play defense. Royals three pulls Bishop Twanger within 13, 44-31. We've got 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Avery Fath, the point guard, dribbles towards his bench with five seconds. He goes to the foul line, skip pass, left corner, two on the clock in the corner, and the jumper is no good for Jacob Redding. And that concludes three at Bishop Twanger. Our score after three, Carroll 44, Bishop Twanger 31. You're listening to the Indiana Physical Therapy Boys High School Basketball Game of the Week on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Yesterday, Cliff Sora shared a top 10 list of hot fusion restaurants, a vegan gluten-free mashup recipe, and a podcast featuring organic food trends. Oh, TMI, I, too much internet information. That's oversharing. Cliff, Geico has something worth sharing with your friends. Like how on geico.com, you could save hundreds on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim. Gluten-free info that's easy to swallow. Mm. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. What if you could save a life by stopping a suicide? I'm Glenn Augustine with the Indiana Youth Institute. Young people today face an enormous amount of pressure. Sadly, they may decide to take their own life as a way to stop the pain. But alert adults can help. First, watch for warning signs such as depression, changes in friends, attitudes, or grades. Also keep an eye out for signs of hopelessness, recklessness, and a feeling of being trapped. If you notice changes, tell the person you're worried about them and be specific about what concerns you and stay in contact with a medical professional for help. Whether you're worried about someone else or yourself, you can call 1-800-273-TALK, the National Suicide Prevention... One quarter left in our doubleheader at Bishop Dwinger High School tonight. In the second half of our doubleheader, the boys game, Carroll leads Dwinger 44-31 through three quarters. The Carroll girls came away with a scintillating 58-57 win over Dwinger in our first game tonight. Remember, coming up at the conclusion of this fourth quarter, live from the Pine Valley Pizza Hut, it's the Parkview Sports Medicine post-game show. Michael McIntyre will have a rundown of all the action in a busy night on both the boys' side and the girls' side tonight, tipping off 2016. And with D.C. Hendricks in our ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM studio, John Nolan, I appreciate you making us part of your rainy Friday night here at Fort Wayne or wherever you may be listening on thefanindiana.com. Carroll with it to start the fourth quarter, but immediately a travel called against Arius Jones. So now Dwinger in the home whites has it on the left side. In the right corner, Sam Royal penetrates right lane, and he scores off the glass. We've got an 11-point game, 44-33, with seven and a half to go. Carroll has led by as many as 18. Man-to-man harassing defense from Dwinger. And Avery Fats answer is to drive down the middle of the Navy painted paint. And he makes the finger roll layup. 46-33. Seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Loose ball. Bottom.
bodies crashing out on the floor. It's a tie-up, and the possession arrow points to Dwanger for both sides. You have to love the hustle. If the ball's on the floor, you're on the floor, some coaches say. And have you seen that's started to become more of a thing in the NBA, too? Especially when guards are letting the ball roll down the floor. So for the clock to not begin, but then heads up defenders now. Marcus Smart of the Boston Celtics did it recently. I believe it was John Wall of the Wizards who did it a night or two ago. Diving to win that ball. Twinger ball here on the left side in the half court. With their student section. Watching on, front row of students with their chest-painted Saints. A turnover, an open look at a right-wing three for Kyle Mallers. Too strong, Dwanger the rebound. Saints in transition right to left. Sam Royal has it left wing. He's guarded by Kyle Mallers. Top of the key three for Campbell Donovan was deflected. And a loose ball falls in the hands of Avery Fapp. The point guard for Carroll dribbles the ball between his legs as he crosses the timeline. 6.15 to go, fourth quarter. Carroll 46, Bishop Twanger 33. Fath hands it off for Mallers. Kellen Brown dishes right wing for Arius Jones, who stands within an earshot of his head coach, Marty Beasley, who wears a green shirt and khaki pants. A turnover. Twanger the steal. Two on two, and a foul is caught. Campbell Donovan pushing the pace, and he draws a foul near the foul line with 5.57 to go in the third quarter. Or, excuse me, the fourth quarter, the final quarter at Bishop Twanger High School. Foul on the floor. Both sides with six fouls in the second half, so from here on out, they'll be in the bonus. And that one was the first called against the Carroll point guard, Avery Fack. Baseline inbound, dumped into the corner. Donovan picks it out for Pettenberg. And he's tripped up and fouled. So he'll head to the line now for a one and one. The Carroll foul is the second against Kyle Mallers. 5.52 to go, fourth quarter. Bishop Twanger at home trails by 13. And Jack Pittenberg makes the first to earn another. He's a 5'11 junior. Pittenberg on the year has averaged... Just a couple points a game. He's got three off the bench in this second half. The second around and out. And the defensive, Karam, comes down to Kellum Brown for Karam. Chargers in their road blue jerseys and shorts. And a timeout is called by Carroll head coach Marty Beasley with 5.43 to go in the fourth quarter. Once again, don't forget, after our final buzzer here at Bishop Twinger High School tonight, We've still got more coverage coming your way live from the Pine Valley Pizza Hut. Michael McIntyre will have a rundown of all the scores tonight. Boys scores, girls scores after the holiday break and teams just playing in tournaments here and there. Tonight, back to the regular swing of things and a busy schedule. Mac will be joined by... Some coaches tonight, so you want to stay tuned to ESPN 1380 and 100.9 FM. Or, if you're hungry, hey, how about you head down and join us at the Pizza Hut live from Pine Valley. However, we still do have 5.43 to go in this fourth quarter. Carroll 46, Bishop Twanger 34. Carroll has led by double digits throughout this second half. Once upon a time, Bishop Dwanger had a solid start and led 7-6. An early turning point in this game came when Bishop Dwanger's only true big man, impactful big man at least, David O'Daniel, the 6'8 senior, picked up his second foul less than four minutes into the game, and he spent the next 10 or so minutes on the bench. And over that course of time, Carroll built itself a double-digit lead. Five and a half minutes to go in the final quarter. Carroll in the half court on the right side, out of the timeout. Jacob Redding dribbles around his screen. A well-executed play finds Kellum Brown open in the right post, and he scores off the glass. 48-34, Carroll. Chargers attempting to improve to 9-2 on the season. Dwangers looking to pull off the upset and draw to 500. Hentenberg drives left baseline, and he draws another foul. 
He was just at the line a minute ago, made one of two. He's got two more coming. This time in the act of shooting, he makes the first. Four points off the bench now for the junior. He wears gray Nike sneakers with white socks, a black swoosh, and he swishes the second free throw. 48-36, 505 to play. Man-to-man defense from the pressuring Saints. Avery Hat, the composed senior point guard, dribbles near midcourt. Whips it on the left wing for Kyle Mallers. Mallers started to penetrate left lane, instead kicks left corner, and Jacob Redding draws a foul on the floor. That's seven fouls against Bishop Twanger now, so it's one and one for Jacob Redding. Redding, Carroll's leading scorer, has been that again tonight. His first, good, and he'll have another. He wears black ankle braces, which blend in with his black Nike sneakers. His second is in and out. And the defensive rebound for Dwinger. The Saints get into the front court on the left side with haste. The clock, not their friend. Still time for a comeback, but running out of it. Four and a half minutes to go. Austin Burns driving left, and the ball poked away underneath the hoop. It stays with Twanger. The Saints trail by 13. Pettenberg with the catch off the inbound. Now his pass on to the right wing, intercepted by Arius Jones. Carroll in control, up 13. Carroll team pretty much on pace for its average of 59 points a game. Redding drives left, the finger roll with the left hand is good. Outlet pass off the inbound, into the right corner, Campbell Donovan tees up a three, no, defensive rebound, Kyle Mallers at 6-7, he soared up for the board, no one was in the same area code as him. Halfway through the fourth quarter, Fath changes speeds, now dribbles it out towards his bench on the right wing. 51-36, Carroll leads to Anger. Mallers with his size, can also handle the ball out near midcourt. Guarded by Zach Smithy. Dwanger stays with David O'Daniel on the bench. Big man who picked up his third foul midway through the third quarter has not returned to action. Jacob Redding, cross-court pass for Kellum Brown. Dwanger starts to double Carroll, an adept passing team. Finds the open man in the right corner, Avery Fath. He drives, kicks out into the right corner for Mallers. Well, Carroll will show patience here. Leading by 15 with 3.04 to go. Hand check foul against Sam Royal. Swinger head coach Matt Costive claiming that was a ticky tack call with his team down. 15. That was the third foul against Sam Royal. And it's one and one for Jacob Redding. He knocks down the first to get another. 52 36, Carroll. And the right hander makes the second as well. 53 36, Carroll on the road leading to Anger. Some fans start to empty out of the gym inside of three minutes. Conlon Martin drives right, and he makes the runner over Kyle Mallers. Remember, Dwanger graduated all five starters from a year ago. So you figure this Saints team is only going to get better and better as the year goes on. Guys who last year were at the bottom of the depth chart, now all of a sudden, key players. Carroll quickly goes from left to right. It's 55-38 after the made basket for Kellen Brown. Dwinger calls timeout with 2.19 to play in the fourth quarter. It's Carroll 55, Dwinger 38. And although Dwinger finds itself down by 17 points, you look over to that huddle to our left. These guys are out of breath. They have given a fantastic effort tonight. 
But it's been an effort against the number nine team in Class 4A, the 8 and 2 Carroll Chargers. Well, how about the newcomers to the SAC this year? Over on the girls' side, Homestead, just in a different league than about everyone in not only the SAC, but the entire state of Indiana this year. The Homestead girls undefeated so far this year and number one in the state as they seek their first state title in school history. And then on the boys' side, although Northside did defeat Carroll, for the Parkview Sports Medicine SAC Holiday Tournament title. That was an overtime game, and Carroll, arguably the best team in Fort Wayne in the SAC on the boys' side this year. Ranked the highest at number nine in Class 4A. Out of the Dwanger timeout, the Saints have it in the half court on the left side. Zach Smith each drives left baseline, trying to knife in of the navy paint, and he draws a foul. Knocked to the deck. And the lefty will have two free throws. That was the ninth foul against Carroll. From here on out, with every foul, Twenger will shoot two. And a first here for Smithy is no good. 6'3 senior. Carroll foul, by the way, the second on Avery Fat. One more to come for Smithy, who wears white sleeves covering his knees. Second one too strong. Carroll the rebound. Kyle Mallers pressured in the backcourt. Front court pass for Kellum Brown, who passes it in the left corner for Jacob Redding, who circles it out. 150 left, fourth quarter. Carroll 55, Dwanger 38. Right post, Kellum Brown, he's doubled. Passes out of it. The passing of Carroll, so impressive. And now at midcourt, Jacob Redding is called for an offensive foul. Campbell Donovan was draped on his back. Redding leaned into him. And Donovan, savvy play from the six-foot junior. He was bumped and drew the foul. Final 90 seconds at Bishop Twanger High School. Foul line, Sam Royal, a leaner, short, offensive rebound. It comes out onto the right wing for Campbell Donovan. His three is off to the left. And Conlon Martin gets another offensive rebound. It's tipped out of bounds and stays with Dwanger with 80 seconds remaining. Inbound to Jack Pettenberg. Drives right. Pass on the right wing. Tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Dwanger. Some exasperated looks from the Saints. New trail 55-38 with 1.11 to go in the fourth quarter. Inbound pass for Carroll in the backcourt. And an immediate foul is called. It goes against Conlon Martin, who is attempting a theft. Ninth foul against Bishop Twanger. It's 1-1, one one, foul line right for Avery Faff, the 5'10", 155-pound senior. At the guy who only averages a couple of points a game, but he also averages a couple of assists a game. Does a nice job of running the Carroll offense. And the first free throw, nothing but nylon. The second around and out. Twanger the board. 105 to go, fourth quarter. Stutter step dribble from Jack Pettenberg, left side. Gives in the middle of the paint to a cutting Campbell Donovan. His left handed hook, no. Carroll the rebound on the run. Uncontested. Jacob Redding, a layup from the left post. On the left wing for Bishop Twanger. Conlon Martin wants three and gets three at three pointer. Trims the deficit down to 17, 58-41 with 37 seconds left. No shot clock. Carroll may try to hold the ball here until the finish. The Chargers will call a timeout. Marty Beasley brings his team together. Perhaps he'll empty the bench with 33.7 seconds remaining. Well, after the Carroll girls won a down of the wire 
game over the Bishop Dwanger girls to start our evening. It's been a bit easier, you could say, for the Carroll boys tonight over the Dwanger boys. 17-point game with 33.7 seconds left, but don't touch that dial. Coming up after the conclusion of this one, it's the Parkview Sports Medicine post-game show live from the Pine Valley Pizza Hut here on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. Remember, you can always listen to us no matter where you are through the iHeart Radio app, through the TuneIn Radio app, or online at thefanindiana.com. And you can join Michael McIntyre in person tonight at the Pine Valley Pizza Hut for our Parkview Sports Medicine postgame show. Carroll with it after the timeout. Final 25 seconds. Carroll will look to dribble out the clock. Dwinger will look to not foul. And a foul is committed by Zach Smithy, who reaches in. Even with the game out of reach. Dwinger frustrated by that call. Saints certainly didn't get any home cooking tonight. But in the end, Carroll... A more complete team at this point in 2016. First game of 2016 for both sides. With this win, Carroll will improve to 14 and 17 over the last 30 years against Bishop Twinger. Carroll also beat the Saints last year by 21. Almost a year to the deep. One free throw good for Jordan Bridges. 59-41 with six seconds to go. A miss from Dwanger. And now Carroll dribbles out the clock. Our final score tonight at Bishop Dwanger High School. The visiting Carroll Chargers, 59. The Bishop Dwanger Saints, 41. Carroll improves to 9-2 and two on the season. While Bishop Dwanger drops to 4-6. and six. Chargers now 3-0 in regular season SAC games. 5-1 overall in the SAC this year. Twanger 0-3 in regular season conference games. 0-4 in the conference overall. So it's a Carroll sweep tonight in their first ever SAC visit to Twanger for both the boys and the girls. Next up for Bishop Twanger on Wednesday, the Saints host New Haven. Looking to get back in the win column. For Carroll, next up, a date Tuesday at DeKalb. That's a 7.30 game that you can hear right here on ESPN Radio 1380 and 100.9 FM. Well, that'll do it for me here tonight at Bishop Dwanger High School. Coming up after our next timeout, we'll be live at the Pine Valley Pizza Hut. Michael McIntyre has our Parkview Sports Medicine postgame show. For D.C.